Hello and welcome to Metropolitan Gym here in Tokyo, Japan. I am Connor Rebush and with me is Kyle McLaughlin representing BadLeftHook.com. We are here commentating on a fantastic title contest for you between Argentinian and longtime titleist Omar Narvaez and Japanese prodigy Naoya Inoue. And as the bout begins here, I should note that uh, Inoue is actually just in his eighth professional fight, though he is fighting for his second title. But he does have a fair bit of experience, isn't that right, Kyle? He uh, he was actually pretty respectable as an amateur. He was, Connor. He had very good uh, success at the national level, and he did represent Japan at the World Amateur Championship while still being a teenager. He ran into a particularly tricky Cuban, uh, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down. And there he's put Narvaez down. Yeah, and, and on the right hand, it looked like actually the first right hand connected and the second hit the glove, but Narvaez seemed to be off balance from the first punch. I think the first punch did the damage. Uh, the second one did not seem to hit clean, but let's see if that was just a flash knockdown. Maybe he just caught the champion cold. But he isn't letting, he is not letting up. No, he's not. And as we watch Narvaez fight here, um, if I'm not mistaken, that was the first time he's ever hit the deck in his entire career. Pretty impressive for a guy with 28 total title defenses in both flyweight and super flyweight. And there he hits the deck again, this time on a Narvaez left, or on an Inoue left hook, excuse me. And uh, Inoue is often lauded for the, uh, the power in his right hand, but to me it's his jab and his left hook that makes him the most dangerous, as we just saw there. Very difficult punch to see coming, uh, particularly for a southpaw like Narvaez. That punch kind of snuck over his right shoulder as he was ducking down. As you can see here, Connor, he has a very diverse approach in his offensive choices, and he dictates range very well, very small steps in and out, very much like the great Wilfredo Gomez in his part at Super Bantamweight. I think that's a ap really apt comparison. I think, uh, just like Gomez, in a way, has got a, a kind of tendency to box, as we see him uh, jabbing here and moving around at range, but he's got the power that makes him a true boxer puncher. It's one of the best representations of that kind of style class that you can think of. Narvaez comes back with a nice left hand there, but anyway managed to catch it on his glove. Narvaez is in a pretty tricky situation here because he's always a guy that nullifies his opponent's offense early and comes on strong in the championship rounds, building his offense gradually. He is not getting a chance to build any kind of rhythm here whatsoever. I think that's, that's what makes it such an interesting matchup. Narvaez is a true rhythm fighter, you know, one of the most the most true to form of that style that you'll find out there, whereas Inoue is is a true rhythm breaker. He specializes, as you see, with that nice, swift left jab, the left hook. He's always throwing these pot shots, and it's very difficult to time when his leads are going to be coming through. He's got such a, a masterful manipulation of timing. Narve is getting a little wild now, coming forward, just perhaps trying to get back and convince Inoue that he's not um, as easy a target as it seems. Uh, definitely, and when he won the WBC Light Flyweight Championship early on in the year, every so often uh, Adrian Hernandez, who was a very respectable title holder, thought he had had a new A figured out, and then he'd show him a different look. Just when you think you've got your timing down against him, he'll open up with something different, and that, that was very clearly an a new A round. Yeah, 10 7. 7. 10 7, that's what I would call it. 10 7, two dominant, knockdowns. Dominant round with two knockdowns. I mean, if you knock down a man who's never been knocked down, he received that first knockdown happening again. And the second oh, yeah. uh, right hand was entirely on the glove, but uh, Narvez was, had his feet square, was completely off balance, unable to receive that punch. Definitely. I think the first punch did the damage. I, I do think he was caught cold. I don't think he was particularly hurt. He definitely recovered from both knockdowns quickly. But let's see if he can get back into it now. He is a very canny veteran of the game. And very impressive for Narvaez to be competing at this level, to be making the 12th defense of his super flyweight title at 39 years of age. Of course, Inoue is uh, very young and fresh, 21. Once again, this being only his eighth professional fight. Uh, you do not tend to see longevity like this down in the lower weight classes no. for sure. Um, he, he's still going, but he's getting blitzed here by a much younger, yes. much faster man. And it's in a way's jab. As much as he would appear to be a, a sort of force of nature in the ring, he's got a very educated left hand. And, and, and like I said, he uses that to break his opponent's rhythm. And as we see now, he's starting to uh, draw Narvaez's hands up to block the left hand upstairs and then throwing the right hand to the body and perhaps setting up a left hook downstairs as well. Nice jab slipping through the gloves there. Definitely, Narvaez, is, this is vintage Narvaez here. He's just moving forward in slow increments, building the rhythm, and nice little shot. Oh, nice shot there from Narvaez. He's getting closer. 
he is. He's starting to sort of figure Inoue out, but as we said before, that's that's happened before in Inoue's bouts, and, and for such a young and relatively inexperienced fighter, he's excellent at, 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 at making ad adaptations to his opponents down the stretch. Here he's kind of feeling and probing with his jab. I call this one the uh, the fighting Harada jab, less of that stinging Miguel Cotto or Benny Leonard jab that he likes to throw, more of a, a range finder. But uh, Narvaez is finding a little bit of success here. He's starting to land some counters, some of these little short looping shots. Oh, oh. and Inoue puts him down once again. Three times. That was, that was veteran skills for Inoue. He noticed that Narvaez was coming closer, so he gave him a little bit more space to come in, uncork that left hook. And let's see if he can finish the job here, because I think that might have uh, shot Narvaez more than the early knockdowns did. Looked like he was regaining his rhythm, so it may have really hurt his confidence to go down once again after he started to started to sort of make his way back into the bout. In a way, stalking him once again, Narvaez has gone completely back on the defensive, and in a way, is throwing straight shots down the pipe here. Even for a puncher like Inoue, it's very, very hard to dissuade Narvaez, who is a veteran. He, he's seen it all in the ring, but he's struggling to adjust to Inoue. He might, ne might never have seen someone who is this who has this blend of skills. Yeah. And in a way is doing a respectable job of uh, opening up a defensive master like Narvaez to these body shots. Once again, he's, and there we see a beautiful liver shot. Look like that may have hurt Narvaez. Um, and once again, he's drawing his hands up high and then throwing the left hook and another one, and Narvaez goes oh. down. That was, that was a brutal left hook to the, to the body there and uh, that's the kind of shot that ends fights, but I do expect Narvaez to get up from that. It's over. Wow. In a way, really just doing a fantastic job. Eight professional fights, 21 years of age. You know, even discounting all of the amateur experience that he had at such a high level, absolutely incredible to be able to do that to Omar Narvaez, a guy who, despite his 39 years of age, has still been performing, you know, at peak levels for quite a long time. Defensive master, and in a way had absolutely no trouble getting around his, his uh, vaunted defensive shell. Really, really impressive stuff from the young Japanese prodigy there. What's majorly impressive there is that a lot of people think he may have skipped flyweight because it's such a difficult division, but he certainly didn't skip up to super flyweight, 115 pounds, to take a soft touch. Narvaez is a veteran champion, and Nonito Donaire, at the time probably the hardest puncher pound for pound, could not even phase him with his punches. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think, if I recall correctly, Inoue signed on with the Ohashi Boxing Japan, uh, the boxing gym in Japan signing the agreement that he would not take easy fights and it seems to be a smart strategic decision for him to have skipped the shark tank that is the top five of flyweight but in doing so he still took on a very tough incredible opponent here building himself up even as he knocks down champion after champion two titles eight professional fights it's really hard to guess how high the ceiling might be for Naya Inoue after a performance like that definitely true and I think it's true that his father has been vindicated he's been saying that uh, now your new was going to be a lot stronger at 115 pounds and I, I, I can't see how you could uh, argue with him there i think that was probably the best performance admittedly a young career but that's the best performance we've seen him so far and i agree with you it is scary to think how far this kid could go technically and certainly in terms of some of the fights that he could be involved with in the coming years all right, well, that does it for us here in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Thank you for joining us for this fantastic bout. Wonderful, wonderful performance from the young fighter here. And uh, I, I don't know about you, Kyle, but I'm looking forward to seeing him in some more bouts, perhaps moving down to 112 and challenging some of the amazing fighters that are there. Or perhaps the last man standing in that stack division moving up and challenging him at 115 pounds, Connor. I'd love to see it. All right, that's it for us here in Tokyo, Japan. Until next time, this has been Connor Rebush from BadLeftHook.com, joined by Kyle McLaughlin, and we look forward to talking to you again.